<laughs> At least not for somebody who works with animals and trains them, and especially wildlife. So my choice was, do I go to work to work for the Department of Fish and Wildlife, or do I do something else? So that's when I did something else. I decided to start my own organization dedicated to helping and saving birds of prey. And that's when Raptor House was actually started. And in 1998, we were a full running rehab center. Now, with running a rehab center and being a nonprofit, we work nonstop. Little did I know all my complaints of working in the zoo and how I was married to the zoo. I didn't realize what a marriage really was until I started my own program. I don't get to take vacation. My vacation is this. I get to come up here and talk to everybody about what I am so passionate about, and that is birds. Now, let me go ahead and introduce you to one of our small birds. I believe the bird he's getting out is the smallest falcon found in North America. It is called the American Pestle, but you may know it as the sparrow hawk. I can remember growing up only knowing that bird as a sparrow hawk, thinking it was actually a hawk and not really a falcon. Well, it's actually a falcon. It's the smallest falcon. How do we know he's a falcon? Well, as he goes by, notice the shape of the beak. He has the notch in the beak, which is called a falcon tooth. They use that to sever the spinal cord of its prey. So, for instance, this little bird will actually hunt birds that are as big, if not slightly bigger, than he is. With hunting those birds, he's going to be able to get full control over it. And once he gets a hold of it, that's where that beak comes into use to get full control over the prey that he is going to be eating, which are things like starlings. Have you even seen a little male kestrel kill a morning dove? actually outweighs So cool! Now, the American kestrel is also one of those birds that you can tell between <laughs> There's always another male waiting around. Uh -oh. So, with that being said, generally that's how you tell the difference. And when I get in, say, a red tailed hawk that's a youngster, if I weigh that bird, I can pretty much figure out by looking at the feet, looking at the size of the bird, and also the weight to be able to tell whether it's male or female because they look the same. <laughs> but with the kestrel, that's different. Males have blue wings and females have brown. So we can tell whether it's male or female just by looking at the coloration. Now, there's a small few other birds of prey that are like that, such as the northern harrier. The northern harrier, the males as an adult are silver in color, and females are brown with a bite. What white butt or rump cap, basically. And um, that's how you tell for that particular bird. And also your accipiter uh, birds, such as your um, and your sharpshins can show some different colors in as well. But the American kestrel yeah. is by far the biggest. Now, one thing that's unique with American kestrel is if any of you are in an area where you see farming, especially vineyards, um, apples, cherries, you may see one of the things that farmers are putting up now putting up nest boxes specifically to encourage the American kestrel. Why is that? Well, the kestrel eats the small birds that damages the soft roof. They also eat the insects that cause the damage and also mice. So they are protecting in a natural way by farmers encouraging them to actually nest in that area. Pretty amazing. It keeps us from having to use hard pesticides and rodenticides and use from killing tractors. That may be something that you may want to look into if you want to encourage a raptor where you live, especially the American Pestle. Uh, if you're in central Washington or Oregon, farmers are actually putting up barn owl boxes that produce hay. We get a great
great number of barnyards that come into our center as the result of them being displaced when the hay is sold and sent to Kanawata to go to Japan and China. Matter of fact, one year we ended up with well over 402 baby barnyards. It was in 2010. We ate seven mice a night at $2 a piece. Imagine the cost of raising those barnyards. This year we have a little bit of barnyards, but not anything like